only species we grow are what we think of as restorative species. So species that actually improve environmental quality, breathe life back into our oceans rather than deplete. My name is Bren Smith. I'm executive director of Green Wave, owner of Thimble Island Ocean Farm. We're sitting here in the Thimble Islands right off the coast of New Haven and Long Island Sound. 3D ocean farming, just think of it as um, uh, an underwater garden. You've got these hurricane proof anchors on the edges and then just ropes eight feet below the surface. And from there we're growing um, all different species. We grow our kelps vertically downwards, then we have our scallops and lantern nets, mussels and mussel socks. Then below that we have our oysters in cages and clams down in the mud. We require zero inputs, no fresh water, no fertilizer, no feed, making it the most sustainable form of food production on the planet. At age 14 I dropped out of high school, headed out to sea, I fished uh, in the Georgia's Banks, in Gloucester, in Newfoundland, then I was in the Bering Sea for a lot of years fishing cod and crab. And then when the cod stocks crashed in Newfoundland, it was a real wake-up call for a whole, whole generation of us. So with the collapse of the fisheries, the unsustainability of industrial aquaculture, I came here to figure out how do I build a small business, how do I feed my kids, leave something for my kids out here on the water. In the era of climate change with our waters changing so much, what am I going to be growing? This is at the southern region of this type of kelp, which is a sugar kelp. And so 10 years from now, 20 years from now, uh, from now I'll probably have to be farming a different species. Mother Nature created these two technologies millions of years ago that can mitigate our harm, shellfish and seaweeds. We think of it in two ways. One, we've got farming for food, and then we have farming for pollution. Farming for food, we only grow in pristine waters. It's the most traceable food in the country. Um, and then we grow in polluted places, places like the Bronx. And that's just to pull heavy metals out, pull out nitrogen, carbon, rebuild those ecosystems. All our crops, our seaweeds and shellfish, actually breathe life back into the oceans. We soak up five times more carbon than land-based plants. We're filtering nitrogen out of the water column, which is the root cause of our spreading dead zones. The challenge with this is both trying to build, sort of do the basics of really trying, trying to build, you know, grow kelp, develop the infrastructure to process it, and move the market at the same time. We have to, all three of those have to be in motion. One small scale farm can create two full-time jobs and uh, five to seven part-time jobs. According to a new report out by the World Bank, if you were to take 5% of U.S. territorial waters, you could create 50 million direct jobs. We've created the nonprofit GreenWave in order to train a new generation to open source our model. We didn't patent it or privatize it. What we did was open it up to our community so that anybody can do it. Because our goal isn't to be kelp kings and run thousand acre farms, but to create thousands of jobs. We go out and harvest, bring it back to our processing plant, and we blanch it. Uh, just for cook it for a little while to stabilize it. Then we turn it into noodles very often. It's a very neutral taste. It sauces really well. It's not what you think of as seaweed. It keeps that really bright green color. It's really al dente. It has like a, uh, just like if you just, uh, an al dente pasta or something. I like the texture, I like the flavor of seaweed. It can be versatile. We smoke the seaweed first, and essentially we're gonna stuff it, roll it with ricotta as you would uh, a rolled pasta, and then we're gonna bake it in the oven, finish it off with a little bit of hollandaise sauce. It's a very tasty dish that we've done in the past. I don't necessarily see it so much as a challenge as it is an opportunity. What traditional aquaculture did was try to grow the easiest things that people want to eat. We're trying to do something very difficult, which is grow things that the ocean can provide and then shift American taste. To reimagine the dinner plate, make kelp the new kale, and really create a delicious new kind of climate cuisine as we move into the future. I think it's worth the effort. You know, we might succeed, we might fail, we don't know, but it's, uh, you know, it's going to be an exciting journey. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here. 
and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.